Yeah, it's always special, isn't it? Always a highlight of the season, always some drama, always some tribal scrapping. We've got just the men for the occasion here tonight. No strangers from their East Midlands derbies, of course. But this, the oldest of the lot, 104 years, 141 years, I should say, of animosity building into this one. Let's have a look at the two sides doing battle this evening. And after resting a few last week up at Sale, George Skivington has drafted all his available frontliners in for tonight. All the World Cup stars from Argentina returning, including Vivas at Loosehead, Alamano at Locke. A Gloucester, remember, without Rapava, Ruskin, Mercer and Ackerman up front, they're all three vital men. Albert Tuasui then deployed at number eight, switching with Jack Clement, who moves to the blind side. And behind the scrum, Varney at nine, Barton developing nicely in the eyes of the coaching staff at ten. Thorley and May installed on the wings, and Santi Carreras at fullback where George Skivington likes him best. Eight changes to the Bath lineup. Finn Russell's return from his New York City break, the most significant of the lot, perhaps Spencer back at nine and captain, arguably just as influential, Ollie Lawrence making his return from World Cup duties for a first premiership outing paired with Max Ajomo. Joe Thocken, a singer back on the right wing as well with Muir and De Glanville hitting some good form recently. In the pack, Will Stewart included at tight head Tom Dunn, making his 201st appearance at hooker, and Charlie Yule's drafted in at lock. The back row missing a handful, but still first rate with Reed, Underhill, and Barbary. Yeah, big, big back match up in the back row, but the one that stands out for me is the two guys that are the conscience of their team Ludlow against Underhill. Big hitters around the field, but their work rate is off the charts, and that's going to be vital to who comes out on top tonight. And after having a few wet weeks for both sides, I think both sides want to play some rugby. They want to throw it about. Both tens will want to do that, particularly Finn Russell on this field. But I've gone for the big head-to-head -head at 13. Ollie Lawrence is still only 24 years old. He's now got the chance to make a 13 shirt in the England team, his chance. But he's got to start playing well. He's got to show that attacking flair that we saw from him in the latter games. But he's against the best defensive centre, arguably, in world rugby. Harris will have a huge part to play if you're going to keep this Bath back line away from their try line. Yeah, it's a mouth-watering one, that one, isn't it? Really is so many good players to keep an eye on tonight. And so much at stake for all of them. They feel it so keenly, these derby nights. Very, very special. Bath led out by Ben Spencer. Like their hosts, 1-2, lost two so far. Those defeats coming in the last fortnight against the Tigers and the Saints last week at the Gardens. Let down a little bit by their set-piece, lacking a cutting edge. Something that should at least in part be addressed by the return of their ringmaster. Finn Russell refreshed after a trip to New York City, back to bring the X-Factor to Bath's attack as they take the fields. What you might call a, a muted reception. Yeah, slightly quiet. The game's changed, hasn't it? We had a weekend off, used to go to Norfolk. <laughs> Well, he knows how to have a good time, Finn Russell, but my goodness me, he knows how to play this game, and he has been an exceptional influence already at Bath, we understand. Great with the younger players, training really hard. It matters a huge amount, even if he gives off a, a casual air. It's, um, it's a unique brand that he has, and it's one that Lewis Ludlow and friends are going to have to handle this evening. Under strength last week in Manchester, where they didn't really fire a shot, Distinctly off colour here a fortnight ago against Saracens. Their worst home defeat in the Premiership for 14 years. And they feel that they owe their fans tonight. And no one feels that more powerfully than their skipper. The heartbeat of Gloucester, Lewis Ludlow. He just lives for nights like this. Well, it's been an important week for Gloucester. They recognise that they have a, a few wrongs to put right. Just not quite found their attacking spark. Uh, maybe the derby will bring it out of them. But before we get underway, we're going to pause for a moment to recognise and remember all those 
who lost their lives in conflict for this country. Armistice Day, of course, falling on Sunday. So across the Gallagher Premiership, we'll be taking a moment to reflect. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years in them. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. And so to the rugby. Perfect night for it. Full house at King's home. And Matthew Carley in charge. Back from World Cup duties himself. Assisted Wayne Barnes in the Rugby World Cup final. And an important job to do this evening. One of the great Premiership evenings. Final messages. Final words. That referee group really did shine, didn't they, in France? They stood out, I thought. We didn't have the world champion in terms of sides, but we definitely had the world champions in terms of officials out there. I thought they were fantastic. Yeah, top draw. And Finn Russell will get us underway here at King's Home. Gloucester and Bath going at it in the West Country derby. Sit back and enjoy. Lewis, Ben, ready? Time on, please. Well claimed by Jack Clements, who's been in excellent form this season. The youngster really making some waves in the back row for Gloucester. Really important, actually, given the absence of Mercer and Ackerman at the moment. To Glanville underneath this one. And, uh, first dig for Alfie Barbary. It's nice from Bath there. They sent Barbary back early. He was right in position to take that carry, take a bit of pressure off the back three. It's good to see that they can expect a lot of kicking from Gloucester today. Russell, a double pump on the ball. Gloucester fans thought it was forwards. He stands so flat, Russell, doesn't it? Very different to some tens. Keeps it alive, and Spencer does similarly. Here's Fergus Lee Warner. Approaching that 10 metre line, and Ewells holds it back. A Jomo. Brought down by Barton. And a, a real tussle for the ball, and Tuasui's come up trumps for the, the Cherry and Whites in the eyes of Matt Carley. 12 placed the ball and left his hands on it so that the guy couldn't get it on his feet. Number eight. I think he did. Place come away with, with it, Tuasui. That would penalty wouldn't, wouldn't have been given, but because Bath wrestled it back off him, just that delay is not what Matt Carley wanted to see. Right. It's a really good technique. Doesn't Everyone put his hands on the floor, puts the hand on the body of the player. And he's absolutely right, just on the floor, waiting for his troops to arrive. Just holds for a fraction of a second, that's what highlights it to the referee. I think Bath agreed. And Gloucester just weathering that early storm as they head up towards the Bath 22, and it's Ludlow's possession. And away it comes from Clement to Varney. Seb Atkinson, nice from Gloucester, this. And away goes Johnny May, straight through the hole and up to the five-metre line. Varney wants it, great counter right now from Bath. Desperate times, calling for desperate measures, but then the turnover. And Gloucester have it through Clement. Blistering start, this. Tuasui. Clement waits. Needs some assistance from Vivas, the returning Puma. McGuigan turning provider this time. Rumbling on is Balmain. Off the ball! Pressure coming on again. And Bath coming off their feet at the right. Varney trying to massage the defences. This is Vivas. 
Onside at the guard. Atkinson. Very narrow in attack, just one man, Carreras out on this wing. Bath spread right across the field, Gloucester going to try go right through the guts. Punching through the middle they go, and the ball is then dropped. And Bath's defence is rewarded, Finn Russell kicks away. Onside, onside. Once more, into the hands of Johnny May, once more, Gloucester attacking, Carreras. Drawing the man and sending Harris towards the try line. Was that forwards to Carreras? Referee's happy enough. Advantage. And Varney then spills it. Yellow card, definite yellow card. Played the nine. He's offside. There's nothing clear for me. Off you go, you're offside. Finn Russell just asking about a previous rock where. He felt Bath players were cleared too far past the ruck. You have to stay within the area of the ruck. But Gloucester absolutely on fire. This is the yellow card coming up. No option for Matt Carley with such a prominent break. Oh, was there a little knock on there Oof. first? There's the break that starts it. We saw Gloucester throw this mass pass off the, off the tunnel before. I think Johnny made two years ago, three years ago, finishes that. It's a great defence from Bath to stop him, but then they come back That's against right, the short clear. side again. Very They've really started to pace Gloucester in the down, wide channels, got, getting the ball side. into the 13. And this was a lovely play. Yeah. You asked the question, Ali. Pass out and back from Harris. Was this forward back to Carreras? It certainly looked yeah. at it from the side, yeah, but then, yeah. as Benny said, I think there's a little knock on here. Are we good? I think. Oh, it's worth Play. looking at again. If there is a little knock-on, then does the yellow card go? The, the problem for Atkinson... Uh, there's no clear and obvious foul play. Uh, for Varney, is Atkinson offside. actually... Yeah, it's a knock-on. Knock on. Atkinson it's tried to pick it up for him and then left nothing, it, and that's what confused him. Hasn't come to me, we had nothing on field. It was a definite knock-on. Bath take the line. Outside the line. It was before the offence as well, so it wouldn't have been a yellow card had it been given. I'd go Gloucester through Ludlow, it's been knocked forwards and the moment has passed and Bath with their 14 men draw breath. Frantic start. Really is, all over the place. Yeah. It's been their downfall so far this season, the line out for Gloucester, they can't get it set. Hits his feet, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it, hits, it, doesn't it hits the back does of kick his kick out out head as he comes head, in. Yeah. He's saying that he's been hit, which is why he's gone closer to Tuasui. And that's why he nice can't quite get the ball nice down underneath his Let's big go. back rower's head. It's all, it's all going off, Ali. But there's the stats. Lost to the worst in the league. Power plays with against 14 men. Only five points they've scored in uh, 30 minutes. It's actually 4.5 points, but it's actually five. You can't score 4.5. Thanks for clarifying. There'll be a lot of people confused at home. Do you think? Throwing things at the TV? Possibly, yeah, possibly. possibly. So De Glanville playing nine here. Scrum penalty's gone Gloucester's way. Three collapse, feet back. Big feet decision. Five metres out from the Bath try line. Kick it goal. And Gloucester want the shot. Wow. Extra man. Totally on top at the moment. He would have, wouldn't have blamed them for going for it. Referee just saying feet too far back on, from Will Stewart. Well, on the one for Mako Vivas to celebrate. Will Stewart, who had something of a torrid time against Saints as he came off the bench last week, having returned from England duties. And a chance for George Barton to open the scoring here yeah. after a, a frenetic Perfect, opening seven minutes. Just what you'd expect, really, from a furious West Country derby. Never deviated from its line. A sweet strike from Barton. And a small platform for Gloucester to build from. 
happiness across King's home. Jules Skivington knowing there is an awful lot to do tonight. Not been at their best in the last couple of weeks. Started well, wins over Quinns and Newcastle. And those rather dispiriting displays, certainly the one against Saracens here a fortnight ago, they were not themselves at all. Clements. Buried under the bodies. Varney. This is one for Johnny May to chase. Not backwards, picked up by De Glanville. Done for Stewart. Good tackle coming in from McGuigan. Russell, oh, lovely from Ajomo. Through the smallest of holes on that inside channel. Fired away by Underhill. Here's Lee Warner adding some extra punch. First time ball in hand for Bath in the opposition 22. No, no! Ruckform. To Glanville. No Spencer, remember. Lee Warner again. An abrasive presence in these early exchanges. Now to the open side, De Glanville having a dart himself. Trouble brewing for Gloucester. Here's Abano. Reed and Dunn assemble, but it's Underhill who's going to have a crack. Stewart. He's wriggled his way there. But he got offside penalty. Brilliant break. Quinn Russell goes hard to the line. Might just go quickly here. Just wondering whether there was a trip in that, Ben. On Ajomo. He hid really well, didn't he, Ajomo? Looked like he wasn't interested. But when you've got players like Finn Russell, you know what's on. So there's the carry in. He's just hiding in behind. He's going to come out of the shadows. They've got a front row forward in front of him, yeah, come up exactly what he there. wants. The front row forwards wants to smash Finn Russell, as all forwards would want to do. And he bites on the tackle. And then inside, so Ajomo's gone between the two props, finds that hole. Very, very close to Bath's first try. It's almost like you've got to triple up on Finn Russell when he's that flat at the line, particularly if the ball's relatively quick and he stood square on you, because if you're a front five guy, you're in a lot of bother defensively with him. So that disguise of having multiple bodies around him. So Jomo's hiding there behind a couple of the big forwards. The attention is obviously on Russell, but then the next prediction is that there's one of the big forwards is going to take it off him. That's what splits the two props. And then at the last minute, Jomo comes out of the shadows. Thanks, Eric. I hope he's seeing it. Ten. He's cutting it fine. He's got 10 seconds. Tough kick as well. Three. And in the nick of time. Calm as you like. So, three points each. And Finn Russell getting Bath up and running. And um, some useful seconds have been eaten out of the clock on the Spencer Yellow as well from a, a Bath perspective. Oh, that's bounced off Miles Reed. It's still in, it's still in field, and Freddie Clark isn't too far away. 22. Lewis Ludlow has got some huge qualities, 22. 22. but his right foot, the touch on his right foot might not be one of them. Just put too much on for Freddie Clark. Get behind the line. Russell keeping things interesting. All right, let's play, please. And as ever, when Jump facing up, not across the line. The Bath number 10, you have to expect the unexpected. Yeah. I think we're already seeing that Bath are a much better side than they were last season. And, you know, you talk about Finn Russell as a player. It's not just how good he is as a player, but his attitude is relaxing for those around him. And you're seeing that in the way Bath are playing now. They're a lot more chilled. Wait. To Glanville's kick. Stay. Calling for the mark. The Bath fullback scored in the last two games, Tom de Glanville. Matt Gallagher lying in wait on the bench. They've got some options. I mean, their squad has been exceptional for several years, but they really do look like a, 
a side that should be challenging, not just for Thank playoffs, you. but yeah. for, for the trophy, really. They've underperformed for years, Ali, haven't they? Really. You know, the last three seasons, really underperformed. Line, but there's just a little look about them now that they look like a completely different team. Don't want to put it all down to one man, but it certainly had a big influence. Yep, Johan van Graan has, has brought a structure and an order and an understanding. And he's uh, assembled a very strong coaching group around him as well. The likes of Lee Blackett, JP Ferreira, Richard Blaze is with Bath now as well. Andy Robinson taking care of some of the contact area and the academy. His Carreras for Gloucester. McGuigan holds it back for Barton. He's got it away nicely and Atkinson is going around the outside. Opening up some space for Freddie Clark. Once more, McGuigan. Just a minute left on that yellow card for Spencer. Harris to Carreras. And here's Thorley trying to ride the challenge. His knee has hit the touchline. And the flag is raised by Sarah Cox. Really good variation from Gloucester. Going to the wide channels, but then McGuigan keeping Bath's defensive line honest. Bath really good. They both come to play, and actually the setup of them is excellent. Look at the tracking of May on the inside here. He's through. If just Carreras just sees him and pops that ball, they've got so many options in attack Please both sides. Good to see. Fraser. The other thing is just They'll going come. back They'll to come. when Skivington first came in. Maybe they played it a little bit tight, went back to his strength, but they're going back to that use of that electrically fast back Whoa. three on those arcing runs from midfield and almost overloading the wide channels with their three best attacking runners. In Carreras, Thorley, and Johnny May. One stop. Ball is available. Let it go, Gloucester. No. Away. 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 There's the ball. Russell burrowing in there. May. Carreras. Really good chase from Bath. They've got all bases covered, seemingly. Thorley linking nicely. Carreras to Harris. And Carreras again, and now Thorley can hit the afterburners. Inside the 22, he moves. Great challenge for the ball, though, put it down, put it down. from Sam Underhill, affecting the turnover. Great turnover. That will be the test for Skewington in particular, because if they're going to play slightly looser than we've seen them done over the last couple of years, they're going to create opportunities to score, but they are going to expose themselves when they're a little bit short-handed at some of the rucks in those wide out. channels. But do you persevere with it, a little bit like Harlequins do, and say, yeah, we know we're going to turn over a couple in the wide channels, but the payoff is we're going to score more tries, and they haven't scored many tries this year. They're starting to play some really nice rugby tonight. Is it just a simple ratio? What's an acceptable ratio for you? How many turnovers would you accept in exchange for how many tries? I think it's simple maths. I think it's nonsensical to not try and play that way. New attack coach James Lightfoot Brown, who spent uh, eight seasons with London Irish, he's been charged with sparking this cherry and white back line into life and trying to develop what George Skivington has been talking about for a season or two, which is to make sure that those those guys on the flanks really get to see quality ball more often than not if you have Fawley, May, Rhys Zamet you've got to use them Gloucester looking to spoil here and doing an effective job the knee went down from the Bath ball carrier. I think he thought that he'd broken well, away from the ball. Really it's just the explanation from Matt Carley. Didn't see that Barbary had gone clearly away from his other bound players. If you step out of a mall and two other guys are still bound on you, regardless of no other players being there, it's still that mall. Or if those players fall away, I should say. If you step out, they've got to release you, otherwise it's a penalty. I know we shouldn't think in four-year cycles when you're thinking about the national sides, but realistically, as a player, you should be thinking like that. Barbary's got to be one of those guys who thinks, right, how good could I be in four years' time, and what do I have to do to get there? 
Bond. Ollie Lawrence is probably several steps up that ladder ahead, but Seven. equally the same. Stay fit for Barbary. That's been a yeah. big problem. Every time he's got close to getting into that England squad and staying there, I absolutely agree. Good picture this side. I'm going to what go England there, guys. perhaps have missed is someone a, a, as a real power ball carrier in that back row. There's loads in this bath team that you can look at that for. You know, a Jomo, fucking a singer still, the Glanville arguably. There's a lot of talent in there, English talent. Yeah, huge amount. Huge amount. Apologies, by the way, for the, the bad language you might have picked up just a moment or two ago. Crouch! Bind! Set! Two, two, three! And now two, three! You need my jockey? Use it! Varney on the break. Atkinson just waiting for Thorley to arrive. Beautifully worked is Johnny May. Doesn't really like the idea of the outside, so cuts back infield. Good work. Advantage. Well, from Clements again, and a penalty advantage right in front of the posts. 30 metres out, Varney might be hurt in the process. Barton's got it away, one man to beat. Clinging onto the ball and working through all the way to the end. Power in the carry from Chris Harris. And Gloucester strike first in the West Country derby. Exactly what I was just talking about. Wingers working to the other side on that arcing run. It's Thorley that comes over, this time to May's wing. There he is, Carreras runs the tighter line, links up with his opposite wing and Johnny May. And that gives them the easy metres on the outside. Lots of blue shirts get attracted. And then as they go back to the other side, brilliant from Harris just to straighten, say, I can take this on, I'll see what happens. Spencer's tracking across, he's got no direct hit to stop the momentum and he finds his way all the way over the try line and dots it down. It's a really well-worked well try Cheers, from mate. Gloucester, but it stems from players stepping forward at a defensive line and not recognising when they're short on numbers. First of all, Ollie Lawrence overreads the play from the set piece. You should never step forward in that scenario in the 13 shirt unless you can kill the ball. You've got to back off. Harris would never do that. And then on the flip side, you find Reed isolating Thokina Singer on the wing, and then it's a walk-in. But they, play, they come to play Gloucester, haven't they? We've not seen this from them for the last two weeks. Thank you. You could see it in Ludlow's eyes, couldn't you, before the match? The intensity. He's kicking really nicely, George Barton, this season, adding the two from the touchline. And Gloucester move into double figures. Just the start that George Skivington was after. And Chris Harris taking matters very much into his own hands here. Not just saying, I'll take the ball on, I'll take Ben Spencer with me. Yeah, you just saw Miles Reid there step forward, maybe only two, three metres too far. But then as a winger, you're isolated. You can't defend anyone. Once again, it's Clement Fielding. Been doing a great job, Clement, hasn't he? Doing that role that we're used to seeing Ackerman do. Hard yards, a bit tighter in. De Glanville waits and Johnny May waits similarly. Just about timed that okay, I think. Obano. There's another man who wants to be forcing himself back into the England reckoning. Lovely again, the inside channel. A Jomo to Reed. Great power and speed as well from the blind side. And Bath so close, but they've knocked it on. Oh, Carrera's tackle sensei. I think the pass is forward, Ali, to be fair, from Finn Russell. But then this is a brilliant tackle. Let's see him now. Watch him swap sides here and how flat he gets after he swaps sides. That does put pressure on the pass now, that's fine. So this is a try scoring opportunity. Great tackle from Carreras, goes nice and low. And then they just force with the counter up. Just watch his hands, just touch the one foot. Just okay. scoops the one foot. Come on. Brilliant defence. Sorry, guys. Time off. It's Tuasui who again gets back. He's been brilliant Once in the, the breakdown. Albert Tuasui. Right. Again, going. puts the hand Let on the player, again. so he's not putting like it on the grass, which in. means he could have attacked the ball if it had been there, but just goes through Alfie Barbary and forces the knock on. I think if you're a Bath fan, you'd be arguing that there's a penalty here. If you have a look where Varney enters the rook from, he completely pushes. Here we go. Here's the break. It's a really nice break. 
watch the tackle, and then watch the first person to the rook. It's Varney from behind the rook, and he pushes the support guy over the top. That's a penalty to Bath. Let's go. Well, twice they've carved Gloucester open on that inside channel. That little Same partnership, the, the fledgling partnership of Russell and Ajomo, seemingly absolutely right on the same page already. Just couldn't find the killer touch and Carreras' intervention, so key. Gloucester have been winning 40% penalties on their own putting at the scrum, they could really do with one here. Nine, get on side, nine, Red. Use it! To Asui under some pressure, uh, he's been driven back over the try line, and that is a bath put in as a consequence. Rock solid at the scrum, and that allowed the pressure on Tuasu. He couldn't quite dig the ball out from under the second row's feet. That almost telegraphed when he was going to make the break. Varney doing his best, but then just steps in, and Spence has a free shot at the number eight. Does really well. As we are this in the side, power matchup, helped by Underhill to drive to Asui back the over the line, on. get the turnover. You watch Spencer there, what he does really well is he just drops his height. So he's not, he knows he's not going to win a collision against Tuasui, but all he's got to do is stop him initially to let Underhill get the time to then hit him and drive him. Brilliant defence, and now Bath, Finn Russell in the first receiving position. This is a great attacking opportunity. We can guarantee the forwards will try and mess it up and drive over for a scrum. So many options here. Good from Spencer. He didn't feel it was settled. He thought Gloucester might have. Just control the push. If, if you present the ball, put it in, all right? Time off. Might have the slight upper hand. You can hear Matt Carley just yeah, saying to Gloucester, like said, make sure I'm not you hold sure your push. presented the ball to put it in. So if you present it, put it in. Gloucester, control the weight. That's why we've gone for a reset. They do again. Am I last time No. So if they do again, what am I supposed to do? Trust me. You're going to get it right if they Trust me. <laughs> but as long as Ben does his job properly, all right? Here we go. Time on. Gloucester, up we come. Take two. Will Muir patrolling this short blind side for Bar. And there may well be a, a plan being hatched between Russell, Ajomo, and Lawrence. It's Barbary's ball. Again, another excellent tackle. That one from Barton. Here's Reed. Gloucester throwing everything at this defensively. Obano runs into another wall of red and white. Advantage, three offside. The offside line breached. Bath with a penalty New advantage. advantage. Six offside. Two in a row. And Gloucester in grave danger now. Penalty advantage, Blue. Tom Dunn fires it out, and back they come the other way. Lawrence, all held for a minute, but not for long. Sensational score from Ollie Lawrence. Seemingly caught in the Gloucester net. He's wriggled free, and he's found a way to the line. Oh, that's an amazing finish, isn't it? Using all that power. Barton just couldn't contain him. Thought he got him. Just Barbary just, picking off the base, using that power. Barton goes That's underneath, right. That's right. makes a good tackle. But as they switch sides, done it a couple of times. It's the two players almost put each other off, don't they? They collide. They don't get a firm shot on Lawrence. And Varney gets brushed off. Barton can't hold him. You got to try. So. I know, I understand, that's fine. Great finish. Tries all good, Matt. Thank you. Sorry, my water boy doesn't want to come well, on too often. So. so much on display there from Ollie Lawrence in terms of presence of mind, poise, yeah, thank you. the power. <laughs> and he's a oh, he's all right. player who's just grown into himself my over the course of the last year, really, Austin. Yeah. We saw the impact he made here, instant impact, having joined from Worcester. He's translated out onto the international stage now as well. He's 24, Ali. Yeah, Feels like he's been limit. around for ages, doesn't he? And we'll level again. Ten points each. 
Ollie Lawrence, first Premiership outing, first try for Bath tonight. Yeah. We've seen that switch back once tonight already, it's really working for them, trying to move that prediction that Gloucester have made when they've set their defensive line. Just change things up. Barton's restart, knocked forwards by De Glanville, chances here for Gloucester, here's Tuasui. A little bit isolated, Ewells with the tackle, and the ball is out. And back they go for the uh, for the knock-on from the restart. Nice and square, we stay down, all right? No, listen. Nice and square, stay down, OK? It's the hands. Good high elbow. Let's go. As well as the face, doesn't it? The face hurts a little bit more, but the hands probably hurt the, hurt the pride a little bit more. We go soon. Cracking field position, this, for the Cherry Whites. Darton keeping his options open, lying deep. Yeah, fully, fully not selling himself early this time on the open side. Well, the blind side as we look, as everyone at home's looking, but you, here he comes now to make the extra man again. Away goes Varney. Atkinson, Barton, Fawley, that's slick from Gloucester. Good defence from Muir. Quick ball, though, for the Cherry and Whites. This is Clement. Atkinson floats one wider for Clark. Big challenge from Ewells to a Sui. Changing the point of attack really nicely here, Gloucester. Clement out of the back door, keeps it alive. Here's Thorley, stays in field That's well. Brilliant, Absolutely brilliant, staying in, ducked into the challenge. Clement on the carry once again, Varney waits. Clark, Barton, Harris goes wider. Atkinson should be on here for Gloucester. Johnny May driving to the line, Varney. It goes Carreras will score. That's high quality from Gloucester. Built so nicely, carried so hard, and found the edge. It's brilliant from Gloucester. Barton at the four. Unfortunately, he took a bit of a knock, and he's getting some treatment. But a couple of brilliant bits of play from him. Offload out the back from Freddie Clark. Thought he does really well to stay in. As they come back, this is where he takes the shot now. But they've kept their overlap on the outside. Great feat to get back off the touchline, and then all those blue shirts get held in, and De Glanville can't get back out. Carreras always going to have the speed. Same again defensively from Bath. They're giving them the outside, they're giving them the corner by moving forward together too quickly and not recognising when they're short of numbers. It's difficult when you're against a side like Gloucester that are going to play to the outside, but you've got to recognise that occasionally you cannot go forward as a line. You've got to use the touchline as one of your defenders. Carreras to convert his own try because Barton is receiving some treatment. Oh, that's how you do it. Full fat seven points for that one. Gloucester 17, Bath 10. And this derby bubbling nicely. You can just see as they get to the outside. Look, all three of those guys in Bath have connected really well, but because they come forward, they end up allowing Gloucester in behind them, and then you're backing off defensively. It's very tough to then get back in position from a subsequent rook. Not taking anything away from Gloucester here, but it could be the story of the night if it carries on like this. Very well taken score. Uh, that the handling noticeable as well. The the speed of it, the crispness of it, the accuracy of it. What I like about the Gloucester attack is how they Use put. It the right people into the right part of the pitch, regardless of what number they're wearing on the back. So for that initial break, they're making getting Barton into the wide channel to be the playmaker out there where they need those skills. Brilliant gather from De Glanville. And then Bath building on the 10-metre line through Stewart, pumping those legs, a little bit of help from Abano. And front foot ball for Russell, just how he likes it. This is Yules on a nice short line. Jomo, well held by Alamano this time. Backwards by Red. Done. 
Russell it's riding the challenges so well and over the top they go and Will Mio can't hang on all went backwards perfect okay So let's have a word with Don Wilduck, who's a part of the uh, defensive coaching setup with uh, yeah, okay, the yeah. Cherry and Whites. Don, uh, you'll be Four. delighted with those two scores for starters. We'll deal with defence in, in a moment or two. H what's your assessment of the, the opening half hour? Yeah, I think we've looked very threatening with the ball. We moved the ball very well to space and uh, put Bath under a lot of stress. Uh, and I know this is not your area of, of expertise necessarily. That's James's, isn't it? James Lightfoot Brown. But the uh, the ability that you have particularly on your wide flanks, you've got to find a way to use it, and you seem to be doing that more and more these days. Yeah, definitely, while not my expertise, I can certainly admire quality attack, and that's what we're seeing there, getting, getting fast boys in, in space on the outside, like you've just recognised. Uh, what about defence? Um, very much your area. Do you have to prepare differently for Finn Russell? Well, he's, he's, he's got a box of tricks, definitely. I think where we're getting hurt at the moment is, is uh, on those inside balls, which, you know, is not hugely imaginative. That's what uh, strategy they've come in with. But if we contain that, um, I think we're looking, th looking, looking not too bad. OK, thanks for your time, Don. Appreciate it. Cheers, thank you. OK, advantage. Not a cap. Playing with an advantage. Bath here and Russell looking to open up a, a little hole for Obano, but the whistle is blown, and there are options here for Finn Russell. The imagination is not something that Finn Russell lacks. <laughs> in fact, I'd argue that he's got more than anyone I've ever seen. The, first in the communication I mean, for me it, was probably wrong. He was clearly lying all the way across. It may be unimaginative, but it's worked so, twice, <laughs> so you can keep going until they close the gap, right? Let's just take a look at some of the basics that he does, and I think Ben will enjoy this as well, because this is from a forward's point of view. Look where he starts, he's a long way back, but look how much ground he makes up before he takes the ball. That gives you forward momentum, he gives the... Charlie uses the, the, the opinion, the, the option yeah, to come with him. It stops the defensive line from coming forward, but look what it does to the carry. Okay. You know, he's running yeah, into three right. guys now who aren't coming towards him, so he always wins the gain line. Because he's pushing players back, they're worried about him, so they won't blitz him as much, and then the forward who's carrying outside him makes easy metres time and time again. You can, have, you can have all the flair, all the brilliance, but the basics like that make huge difference to your carriers. He stopped and waited and held, and that was the reason he knew it was tight. Here's Barbary with a decent run up, and he's stopped in his tracks very effectively by Chris Harris, who goes back in to compete hard. Is fine. And the ball is there to be won, and McGuigan says, I'll have that. Gloucester hungry tonight. Freddie Clark to deck. Knock on advantage. Knock forwards by Bath. Ludlow. And Ewell's having a little nibble in there, but over the ball legally by five, but he knocks it on the jackal. A Gloucester scrum. Barbary wins that first collision, but then it's McGuigan who comes in. Absolutely pile drives him back. And I think the decision was that everyone had gone off their feet, so the ball was out, but you asked the referee, McGuigan asked yeah, the yeah, referee, yeah. he was happy, so he plays on. That's really right. good shot from the hooker. Uh, Sarah, right? Well, they're up for it tonight, aren't they, Gloucester? You can just sense that desire is just on a totally different level to anything we've seen from them in the yeah, last fortnight. Yeah. All right, John. Maybe it takes a on both sides of the ball, which is great. I mean, Scrum. Yeah. maybe that's what, what they've needed, is their attack game to start firing so they get that belief and the momentum. You good? Yeah, OK. A lot of metres made, part of that by where they're playing and how they're playing. You're always going to make more metres in the wider channels. Water off, please. Cross the scrum, knock on. Sometimes it... It takes a, a stinging defeat like the one Saracens inflicted upon them to provoke a response like this. I guess the challenge for, for Gloucester is not to have to rely so heavily on those kind of exacerbated emotions week in, week out. They need to find a level, don't they? A level of consistency that will allow for 
for that on occasions, but their base level needs to be relentlessly good. 100%. Season doesn't allow for too many fluctuations in form. Particularly now it's condensed into the 10 teams. So interesting setup behind the scrum here for Gloucester. And to either side tight in have now all moved to the left and Barton has Carreras with him and Harris who's making some big dents tonight good pick up from Clark he's become absolutely critical in the engine room for Gloucester penalty advantage for a high tackle Carreras in behind Fawley gathered up by May and no advantage has come to this point well back behind the game line Keep playing your advantage. And Barton now on halfway. A little dig over the top, claimed by Spencer, and back we go. Just trying to look at how Barton Number and Carreras, who's played obviously in the World Cup right, at 10 for Argentina, the how they're working Quite together. Look at them at the right. top of the screen. So Carreras on the inside now, Barton on the outside. As they go to the other side, watch how they work back together to get back into those ball playing positions. Carreras needs to be the second playmaker, so he's going to work. They're out of the back into position now and then Barton's looking for his man he sees him and then he puts the ball through into the tunnel and you've got another playmaker in that wider channel that's the uh, the challenge from Will Stewart which drew the penalty uh, and as ever a lot of talk around the, shoulder. the selection of yeah. Santi Carreras yeah. at yeah. fullback George Skivington insistent that he actually prefers him there he knows he has to develop George Barton. Adam Hastings is out at the moment and will be for some time. And he's giving him the confidence and, I guess, some quality all around him to build him into the 10 that Gloucester will have over a long period. Carreras can play so well in that position at 15 that you almost get the benefit of how New Zealand do it with Moanga and, and Barrett, two tens on the field, but if you're trying to play into those wide channels, it's really useful to have those hands a little bit wider out. Three more points from the young number 10. Inside has given Gloucester a 10-point buffer. It. Don't get too preoccupied as well with the numbers on the shirts. It's becoming less and less relevant. Here's the Glanville. Great chase from Johnny May, shutting down all of those options really early. Just a handful of minutes before the half-time break. Five, no, you're off your feet. Spencer to the boot, knowing they need the territory. Carreras. First midfield box kick I think we've seen in the game so far has been yeah. particularly low in the number of kicks. Okay. You can dig it out brilliant. with your hands. What a treat. You can dig it out with your hands, now I'll let you play. I think we should ban it. Use it! We're now going to see seven of them. <laughs> to Glanville. He wants to straighten. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. For Russell, Nearly. seen a lot of space in behind Varney, who covers the ground well. Oh, stay on, stay on. Hold, hold. On casual, side. very casual. On. Just chase brilliant. on here for Muir, yeah, casually brilliant. Break stride. And uh, Atkinson uses Carreras, we've seen him slip through Backwards. small holes many, many times before. This is Clements, Gloucester looking to build for one no, last big push in first. this half, perhaps. Thank you, Eric. Tuasui. Use it! Stephen, play the ball. And Johnny May back always come back off his shoulder and it's wound up with Ludlow. No. Clark plays nine. And to a sui or smart from McGuigan. Carreras trying to find that edge. Thorley sets off in pursuit of that one. And Russell. Dodges past one, gets it away to Lawrence, who in turn gives it to Thorley. That's held. 
yeah. Didn't release on the tackle. Get off him, get off him. Well, that get could off be 10 him. metres for slowing it down. Tackle complete. Still think defensively back, back look weak the ball. against sides that start to play with width against them. Ollie Lawrence is so keen to get forward and put pressure on that he finds himself in no man's land. Well, I think we have to remind ourselves also how bad their defence was and how far they have come. Austin, it's been yeah. a huge improvement. They were the third worst, the third worst defensively Outside last that. season. Season before that, they leaked 107 on. tries. On Fraser, please. And um, before tonight, it was eight, Six. which was the the joint fewest. So the curve is most certainly upward, even if it's not a a finished job quite yet. It's also an international player coming back and going into a new system. And Gloucester have won the line-out ball, crucially. Use it! Thank you. Keep going, yeah, keep going with it. Big drive to dig them out of this hole, Gloucester territorially. And Varley knows that the clock that you can see is not accurate. And as a consequence, Gloucester will head to the dressing room with a 10-point buffer. Scores from Chris Harris and from Santi Carreras. Just the one from Bath, from Ollie Lawrence. It was a cracker, but at half-time here in the West Country Derby. Gloucester 20, Bath 10. Yeah, but no what a great half of rugby we saw. Excellent first 40 minutes. Both sides full of attack, full of ambition, keen to put some width Ready? on it. Time on. and really carry the attack to their opponents. So, ten points the difference, Gloucester in front, desperately in need of a, a morale-boosting win here tonight. But Bath with a, a full box of tricks still, and some firepower to add, potentially, as Use well, it. from the bench. Spencer. Clears to the touchline early on here. I wonder what the uh, the half-time message would have been from Bath. They've carved yeah, open a couple of lovely opportunities that inside ball, Austin. What would be the message from Van Grant? Okay, just off, just the finishing, clinical nature of the finishing? I think it depends how they want to play. If they want to play a high-powered, multi-phase game, then they can't just always play off Finn Russell. And that's what it's looked like so far. All the breaks have been off Russell. There's been nothing in the 13 channel apart from the break. They haven't really gone wide that much. You know, Lawrence's try was a, a big plus point for him. But apart from that, I can't remember them going wide with ball in hand. Joe Thock and the singers on the pitch. Right. We haven't mentioned him. No. Sure. They're exactly that. They, Will Muir, similarly. They look to take on some of the big front row forwards in their attack. They haven't the really up. done much in those wide channels Five. yet. But maybe he needs to work off his wing a little bit. And, you know, you've got someone, we saw that what Ajomo did off the inside shoulder. Off in Russell. McGuigan to Clark to Varney. And Seb Atkinson standing at first receiver. Harris thumped over in the tackle. That was a big shot from Ollie Lawrence. I'm not sure if he's um, if come off, off the, the best of that. It's actually um, Max Ajomo who put the tackle in, and both men have stayed down on their haunches. And De Glanville has just sliced that clearance a wee bit. And that will lead to a Gloucester line out. Inside to, the 22. I have to look at this tackle. They, they both seemed quite upright. He's holding his jaw. Yeah, maybe okay, his throat, we can play on here. He thinks he was hitting huh? the throat, doesn't he? Yeah, we can. He did play put on. his hand straight up. Oh, the the isn't it? That's going to need another look, isn't head it? Knock. Is it chest and then the head comes down onto the You're shoulder? The yes, Stop. that's right. Time up. Well, <sighs> okay. I think they need to look at it, but problem, on problem. first viewing. Problem for him is he's upright, isn't he? As the yeah. tackler, there's no sort of bend at the hip, and that will be the first thing the referee looks for. I'm just happy Carly wandering across to worries. see this on the big screen. Okay, looks like his arm's on the shoulder from that side, yeah. and from this side, yeah, I think he's okay yeah. personally. From those two angles, I think he's OK. That one looks worse, but I don't think you see the impact on the shoulder. Yeah. The shoulder doesn't quite get to his chin, so I think he's OK. He's playing on. He's okay. happy. Great. Come on, Al. 
We're over is here, that Bart. whip of the head down, isn't it? It brings the chin down. Yeah, it's all good. Just no gets away with it. It's not clear head on net contact for me. No, it's OK. I agree with you, thank you. So, um, most significantly, both players are, are back up and, and looking good to go. So, the ball is there for Gloucester. Real opportunities at the start of this second half. Varney on the loop. And um, good defensive work on Johnny May. Sam Underhill's all over everything at the moment, and Gloucester backpedalling, trying desperately to protect that ball. Clark. And there seems to be a greater urgency to the Bath defence. Very swiftly up, Lee Warner was suspiciously quick that time, but he was ahead of his teammates, and that created a slight dogleg which nearly got exposed. No, no, no. Barton, Alamano to Tuasui. Do with some direction here, Gloucester, because they've gone through a lot of phases and they've gone 25, 30 metres backwards. Credit to the buff. Defence trying to suffocate them at source. We saw this last week, actually, against Sale. They played a little bit too much, they got turned over, so good decision from Barton. His half back partner to go to the coot, to the kick and to the boot. Yes, yeah, a mixture of boot and kick. <laughs> to Glanville. Holds on, but um No blue, no out! Decent. That's fine. Counter drive from Gloucester. The ball is loose. It's there to be won. And the Bath eventually have it. And here's Barbary, who really hasn't been allowed any sort of freedom to move so far tonight. But maybe now Bath conjuring something. Through Russell. Tackled himself. Underhill. Low slung, excellent man of the match in that England game against Argentina for that bronze medal at the World Cup. A Jomo to Russell, and Lawrence goes wide, and fucking a singer drops it. So frustrating for him, having waited all that time to get his first shot. Line out. But a little bit more width on Bath's Line play, out. as we were just talking about. Just saying square, aren't they? 15, replacement. Keeping all those Gloucester players 15. honest, keeping them square, just creating enough room for the Thock and the Singer. First change being made by Five, Van okay, Graan. them complete the sub. Thock and the Singer staying with us, but uh, De Glanville's going off, he's been replaced Line by Matt Gallagher. Team. With a foot injury towards the end of the first half, had to have some treatment. Romano with the dummy. Oh, that's been underthrown, and Lee Warner has it for Bath. And this is Barbary targeting that channel where Barton is lurking. Stewart, Russell, a Jomo. Tackle, let him go! Lawrence, again the width, and Muir brought into the equation and doing really well, Will Muir. Fighting his way into the 22 and setting up this excellent field position. Russell to the line, Obano tumbling onwards. Ajomo, Russell again, just gone in behind Underhill. And the ball has been scooped up. No, no, no. Russell. A Jomo. Lovely oh, ball to Will Muir. Now he can stretch his legs. Crashing forwards. Another fine tackle from Carreras. Second critical the one from the Gloucester fullback this evening. Miles Reed up the other end of the pitch in the first half. And that one on Will Muir. Almost as key. And Gloucester regained possession off the back of it. Nine! Shed lending their support. And Varley looking for a slightly better angle. Charlie, no more, no more. And Varley to the stands. They're making their breaks, Bath. But just can't get that ball over the line, and half of that is down to this man. Off. Two tackles in the game. And they've both been absolutely crucial. Muir with the initial carry does really, really well. Come on, 
Carreras comes across and then watch, he counter ups, he joins the counter up. That gives them Tuasui that extra bit of momentum. Clark's in there as well. And they turn the ball over. Onside. Underhill provides the possession for Bath here. Lawrence bouncing off one, driving through two. And on a plate for Spencer Barbary at pace. There's a little bit more bite to the Bath operation since the break. Russell, kick pass for Thokina Singer. He's onto this. Another big shot from Carreras. That one's hurt. But he's back on his feet. Patrolling that short side. He's down. And he's really hurt himself. Thokina Singer was almost at full tilt there. Bath still have possession of the ball. Barbary does really well to get that away to Russell. It's opening up here, and Lawrence is stepping back when Muir was waiting for it. Obano now. Was that forwards to Barbary? It was. And Lawrence is really shouting at himself. Away, 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 away. Captain, move away. Great Carreras tackle. No, you move away. Setup. The setup play is fantastic, isn't sure it? Whether the way that Finn Russell switches direction, comes back to the short say, side, the kick's absolutely on the money. But look at Carreras. He knows where the ball's going. The ball doesn't matter. Forward Just looks at the eyes of Thokina Singa. I think this is a tough pass, actually. He just finds himself on the wrong foot at the time when he's going to make the pass. For a kid watching that at home, for you to throw that ball 10, 15 metres at pace, your right foot's got to be on the floor. If it's not on the floor, you can't make the pass. How good has this guy been defensively? What I loved was the way, even though he was injured, he got back on his feet and stood on the blind side. Wasn't probably going to be able to make a tackle, but it just is another body that the number nine, when he comes in, has to figure out. Well, it's not on down the blind side. There's someone stood there. He doesn't know how badly injured he was. I wonder how many defensive coaches around the world. I know Phil Lardy used to say it. I'm pretty sure Sean no, no Edwards will say it. If you're not dead, get in the defensive line. <laughs> He's made three tackles tonight. Yeah, try savers. And Let's each of them have been arguably try saving ones. Just going back to that Muir opportunity or, or the, the Lawrence pass that did, didn't come. I, I get Austin's point, but if they could have got the ball into Muir's hands, he's a real tough carrier who will stay on his feet. Lawrence might have got the ball back from an offload, back on the inside if he'd tracked him. So. Yeah, it really felt, felt like it had to go, didn't it? And uh, Gloucester need to take care of this exit from here and they're under pressure in that scrum so as he's done well Varney's clearance providing some relief to Gloucester fans Back up on the 10 metre line, changing the front row for Gloucester Time with Gloucester Fraser Balmain coming off, being replaced by the Russian international Kirill Gotovsev. Very important to the cherry and white cause, Fraser five. Balmain. Very much the first choice tight head. Oh, Lee side, Warner has the line out ball. This is um, some excellent hard straight running by a Jomo. Yules. Muir calling for it. He's looking for it now in a way that neither winger really was in the first half of Bath. This is Barbary. Scrapping with McGuigan. And laying it up. Russell. Challenging the line himself, keeping that Gloucester defence honest. They're quickly back into shape. Here's a Jomo. Stewart's find a hole in and around the ruck. Russell now probing, fucking a singer, driving, and well held by Clements and Ludlow. Stacking the open side bath. Every single one of them is covering that side of the field. This is Muir, bouncing through one and firing through. Well, they call on the horse. 
And if we're honest, that was a thoroughbred finish. It really was high class. No right to score it. Men all around him, men in front of him. Will Muir the winner? He said he was good at staying on his feet. Wow, what a pass this is from a Jomo, though. The little show looks like he's going to just tap it on. And then he rifles that ball Welcome out. Back. Cheers, mate. And then it's, it's Carreras, isn't it, who's made all his tackles. Yeah, thank you. All the crucial tackles, but this time with a run-up, he can't do anything about Muir. What a finish that is. Not only the size and power of the collision, but the way he accelerated off the back of the hit without almost breaking stride. Tries in five of his last seven to this point. Will Muir and a very pleasing moment for Johan van Graan. Terrific try from the crossfield kick from this man against the Leicester Tigers. For that one. Full of raw aggression. Has he got an off-bend on this? He has! Bath within three points, <laughs> and Finn Russell, he's a brave man. He's a brave man, asking the shed to quieten down. <laughs> Loves it. Well, the shed will say they hate it, but they love that. Miles Reed has to deal with um, the full force of Ollie Thorley. Step on side. We'll hear from uh, Johan van Graan in a moment or two with any luck. As Bath rumble on through Tom Dunn. Use it! And this derby continues to delight. Carreras. Held in the tackle by Underhill and then the ball secured. Fawley. And they're locked over this Bath. And they've been awarded it. Thanks to Thomas Dutoy, who's only just come on. And a really important turnover that really could put a spring in their step. Let's have a word with Johan van Graan. And uh, we'll speak to him in just a moment because Spencer's gone. And Lawrence is threading this forwards. And again, Muir is galloping onwards. He's gathered it well. And now he might have the strength to go all the way. He stopped just shy of the line. Spencer to bar oh, across the face of Barbara and it's loose and picked up by Obano and Reed has it needs to smuggle it away. Lee Warner there in support. <laughs> Carreras, takes Carreras the again with a tackle. That was incredible. It's Barbara who's down. Again. Yeah, on the far side of the field. That is the last thing that Alfie Barbary needs. It's the last thing that Bath need. Let's hope that. Um, Just. The damage is not severe. He's had Please such a terribly difficult time of things with injuries. Right, and injury, the knee trouble that has plagued him. He's trying to he's trying to shake it off, trying to walk it off. Right. Agonizing to see such a high quality young player have such a difficult time with injury stop starts, Ben. There from the TMO, it's a tackle off the ball that causes it. There he is, looking. Oh dear, that is bad. It's a no arms tackle. Yeah, it's a legal tackle, but without the ball. Green saying it's legal. Legal? I'd like to see it again. action, but he doesn't have the ball, so it will be a penalty restart, okay? Where's Ben? Ben. Let's take a look at it again. Ben. Well, does attempt to yeah, wrap, does attempt to wrap, yeah. It's not an illegal tackling action, but it he is a tackle wrap, without he the does ball, attempt so it'll be a penalty to, yeah. restart, okay? Oh, yeah. Just his knee Let's yeah, have a word with, uh, with Jan van Graan. Um, yeah, and just, just briefly, the, um, the impact that Alfie Barber has made in the short time that he's been with you, the injury troubles he's had, this is... This is not something that anybody wants to see because he's such a talented young player. He's had a very difficult time of it, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Uh, hopefully, it's okay. They obviously took a shot there to the knee. Um, but look, hopefully, he carries on. 
Um, your assessment of where we're at right now, because the game very much in the balance, you've had a very strong start to the second period, seems to be getting it to the width a bit quicker this time. Yeah, we just need to be a bit more clinical, we made it too many errors in the first half and a bit too tight on D, but uh, hopefully we can get some more points now. Let's have a look, thanks so much for your time, Johan. Bath within sight, and Miles Reed sizing this one up. Taken on in the tight exchanges. Underhill looking for the pick and go. That's the voice of David Rose on TMO. And Bath working their way over the line with an advantage. Detroit, he scored three already this season. There's number four. Extraordinary impact from the South African tight head. Barely been on the field a matter of minutes. Thomas Dutoy for Bath. And the visitors hit the front. Wow, the atmosphere's changed inside King's Zone now. Real worry from the Gloucester fans because Bath have stepped up a gear, both with their attacking game and physically. The penalty advantage coming, they know they've got the free shot. They don't think about going wide. And Dutoy using that scrummage technique and power to pick up, duck underneath the tackle and then extend himself over the line with all that strength. Referee right there, he's happy he sees the ball grounded on the line. Yeah, there. Mm, it's tight, isn't it? But <laughs> it's just the front. Tight. But he couldn't be better positioned, could he, Matt Carley? Well, he's the, uh, try the top try scorer in the Premiership now, Thomas Dutoy. And an easy conversion for Finn Russell. Gloucester 20, Bath 24, and an altogether different field of King's Home right now. Really is, isn't there? Last 10 minutes, Bath have just had the upper hand completely in terms of the tempo and applying pressure. We were talking before the game about the strength of Bath's bench might make a real difference tonight. Obviously, Dutoit's made his impact, but a few more big players to come on. Can see it. Bruce McNally, Schoeman. Miles Reed gathers it in on the restart. Might be time for Reese Zammett to enter the fray, I think. Use it! Spencer. A little bit of a slice, but it'll do for now for Bath, who are feeling very different about the way this match is unfolding. Chris Harris has come off. Right? for Gloucester and Albert Tuasui similarly. Seven, I've really heard. seen the Gloucester drive at the line-out, have we at all? Just wonder whether, with the game being so fast and free-flowing, whether now might be the time just to throw one in. Ludlow with line-out ball. And away it comes. Varney on the loop, this is nice. Thorley trying to muscle away through. Lawrence looking to affect the rip, they've stolen it through Underhill, Bath. Turnover ball. And Spencer lets fly. Johnny May anticipating that, and he's going to set off crossfield. Skipping past the challenge of a Jomo, he's going really wide, really needs to straighten, and he's gone nowhere. Uh, Bath are marauding, and Bath are winning the penalty. Maybe a bit of frustration from Johnny May. He knows he needs to give his team a spark, but Underhill has just given his team a huge boost. Really good defensive read from Lawrence and Ojomo, but the speed of Underhill, who had read it in the background, to race forward, win the battle of the shoulders. And then Johnny May tracking across field, can't find a gap in the blue defensive wall. And they just flood that breakdown. A big double play. At breakdowns for Bath in the last phase. Let's get there first, eh? Very high calibre open side, as we know. Former Gloucester player, of course, as well. And making his mark this evening on the ground. And setting up this wonderful field position for the visitors. Tom Dunn, ball in hand. Up goes Yules. It's with Dunn. Gloucester doing a fine job of forcing this drive. Spencer fires it away, oh, in trouble, but somehow Ajomo is skipping clear and pirouetting through the tackles. Now it's with Thokken, a singer. Being held well by Clement, but driven forwards. The ball is loose. Oh. 
Ripped out by six, but ripped forwards. Ripped forwards, so Bath put Number into the scrum. It forwards. He's massive, isn't he, fucking a singer, but sometimes you just don't play your size. And when he's in that position, he's just got to get his shoulders a bit lower because he's so powerful. Finds himself quite upright in the tackle, easy to choke. Time off. You all right? Remember it. Let's start to use him more, Ben, now. You know, you said it earlier, get the ball in Muir's hands. He's very, very good, very difficult to stop. Thocking a singer in close quarters, if he gets lower, equally so. Someone else who's equally difficult to stop, I think, is this guy. Yeah, Gloucester fans will be happy to see him New stripping off, height, ready for action. Good standard. Well, not all the way, hopefully. Time on. It's a family game, come on. <laughs> I'll be out this way. Doesn't even merit a response. What doesn't? Bind! Scrum here to Bath, great options. Russell and fucking a singer directly behind. Oh, just talking about the wingers, and Ben brought it up earlier about getting the ball into Muir's hands. Thorley's had the ball the loads in the game. So, away from both teams, okay? If you if you look at them side by side, Thorley's had loads of meters. He's carried really well in the midfield, but then the defining moments of getting the ball near the line and finishing, and that's where Muir's comes into his own. Very very similar stats. Game line success, very close. Clean breaks. But ultimately, the ability to finish 10 metres out, Muir's had the slight upper hand between the two of them. Thought he's been brilliant in the middle of the field, no support lines. Just shows you how important wingers are in the modern game. Head below your hips, heading straight to the floor. Scrum penalty here to Bath. Goes against Katosta, but pressure on the other side, Detroit again, making an impact. Barno's done his job, won the battle right in front of the referee, but cornerstone on the other side pick and go is the option it's Tom Dunn and he's got to within a metre already here's Abano in part of the cherry and white shirts but it's looking difficult from here Bath assembling and looking very very dangerous Barbary seems to have shaken off his injury troubles he's darting for the line and driven back comes Ford Robinson to try to stem the flow here but Bath have made it once again from close range happy it is a Bono and that is the bonus yeah, point try for Bath ably assisted by his hooker done again those front row boys when they get close to the line so good at taking that initial hit waiting and then going again being able to stay on their feet not go to ground sometimes it's almost good not to go too hard for the line and you let the opposition use your momentum yeah, it's good matt thank you they just wait and then almost like a scrum that dips and goes again they get themselves over the line matt you also had a 18 no arms as well as he picked yeah, around yeah. the corner yeah, well no the arms, complexion of things has changed yeah, all together and it will probably account for the deployment of Lewis Reese Zamet and Santi Sosino from the Gloucester bench. Finn Russell in the meantime, lining up the conversion. Barbary is coming off, he's been replaced by Jako Kutsia. And there's two more points from the boot of Finn Russell and Bath now have clear water between themselves and their hosts 31 points to 12 and they've scored 21 unanswered points in the 21 minutes of this second period one-way traffic what can Rizamit do about it what can Gloucester do about it Miles Reed. Staying in field and uh, Carreras deciding on the volley. It's fallen for Lawrence. Well, offside. And Gallagher is feeding a Jomo. The kick is blocked. Oh, that should have gone through the Maybe hands that time, side. definitely. Tidied well by well, Matt Gallagher. From the kick.
Ball kicked forward, 12. You started moving forward before you were put on side. From that volley. The ball flies to the ball, just foxed Carreras, didn't it? Yeah, he thought it was out, but I'm not sure why he decided to hoof it. He had loads of time to take it. As this goes wide, though, you've got to recognise who's in front of you. You've got two front five guys. Jero's just got to put the pedal down. Guy on the outside's bit in. That ball's got to go, has to go. Muir's away if it does. He knows as well. That's a great kick. Yeah, Spencer's really gone for it with that kick. Terrific kick has put them to within six metres of the try line. And the plan is being hatched. Okay, who's the receiver, Gloucester? Already with the try bonus meters, in their you. back pocket. Six. Definitely taking the sting out of this King's Home crowd bath in this second period. It has all gone very, very quiet. Lewis Ludlow needs to find a way to reinvigorate his team and his support. Charlie Yules, though, providing the line-out ball, and this drive is looking threatening. In come the backs, fucking a singer, and a Jomo, and Lawrence, and still they drive. That's a try. And it's a penalty try. Who's going? Who's going to the bin? In goes the hand to the pocket. Clements, actually. Clements underneath. Yeah. Six. It's been shown to Jack Clements. So Gloucester's woes deepen still further. Down to 14 men. There's still 15 minutes to play here, and they are 18 points adrift. Such a well set up drive. We probably won't see it. They're about to kick off because there's no conversion, but the speed of snap, they just went. And then all the backs came in to add their support as well. But those players at the front managing to stay on their feet till they got really close to the line. So when it was pulled over, referee had no choice. But an immediate penalty the other way. Oh, they need something, Gloucester. And they need it pretty quick, you would think, because all the momentum has swung right against them in this second spell. That's the first penalty that Bath have conceded in this half, and Barton looks to be cramping off the back of that kick into touch. But Gloucester taking um, an eternity to get to the line out. That, that's something that the uh, referees are allegedly keen to clamp down on. The problem was they were waiting for Barton, their 10, to tell them what sort of call they wanted. Sassino to Ludlow. Cherry and Whites need this. Sassino breaks away and coming clattering through the middle as Max Llewellyn fresh onto the field. Driving hard towards the line, five metres away. Varney. Rizamek going nowhere. Flattened by Hock and a singer. Clark. Another big drive up the middle from Freddie Thomas. A nice short line being driven here again and again. They come, Gloucester building nicely with an advantage. Barton in behind the attackers and Johnny May outside. gathers outside of touch. They knew they had the penalty, May has it. Just so flat, they didn't give any time. He couldn't have got the ball through his hands quicker, but just Never that onside. metre or two of Never depth onside. would have Blackford. resulted in that try going over. Varney speed at the at the ruck, absolutely superb. Sassino. Ludlow. No way through Charlie Yules. Balls out. Backwards. Gatovsev. Wrapped in battle with Fergus Lee Warner. So Atkinson waits to the left, instead it's to Barton to the right, slips it away to Johnny May, and all the footwork in the world won't provide an opportunity from there. Varney has to protect possession. Clark and Ludlow to the four. Alamano now, another penalty advantage with Gloucester. Once more, Kingsholm 
finding their voice. Barton threading width on the ball. It pops out to May. And he's done well, but he's surrounded. Barney. Barton. Big tackle from Beno Urbano. They're back well behind the gay line, and Matthew Carley decides that he's had enough. Number four offside. I'll stick it into the corner or the tap. Ben, be careful. Back foot. Or the tap, Asasino. Lewis, be careful latching. Lewis, be careful latching. Sassino heads a little laterally. He's done well, though. Thomas. Away, seven. Ball available. Hands up, six. Alamano. He's over. Listen to the roar. Vital moments for Gloucester. Up against the ropes. They've come back punching. Well, he's hurt himself, but it's a really smart finish because he knows the hush shot's going to come in and he knows it's going to come in low. So he almost just waits yeah. for it and then bounces over the top. And he's got the reach. Dunn tries to get his boot under the ball, no avail. And Barton adds the two. Gloucester with their 14 men, remember, Clements in the bin. We've come up with seven no critical points. Goes over line, man's on his shoulder. And they're back within 11. He almost doesn't go forward again, does he? But he kicks his feet backwards away from Reed's tackle, and that allows him to half step out of it, half jump over the top. Takes a knee in the rib, doesn't he? As he's scoring. Yeah. Two. Fascinating okay. 10 minutes in store. On comes Niall Annett at hooker for Tom Dunn. OK, number five, replacement. Five. No. And Ben Donnell is on. OK, go round the back. Into the Gloucester back row. Ready. And uh, yeah. Matthias Alamano has been removed. So Donnell, who plays most of his rugby at flanker, will um, yeah, almost no, certainly have to Langdon, provide the locking option alongside Clark now I'll do this, uh, then. with uh, with Freddie Thomas I suspect and time on be a little bit of rejigging to be done Play on. off the shoulder okay. it's Niall Annett's ball shot, Spencer. Dangerous around the rock, but Gloucester doing enough. Clear lift, clear lift. And it's Lewis Ludlow coming up with a really important turnover. Timing-wise, geographically speaking, Crucial. Ben, critical. Would have completely finished everything for them if Bath had come back down and halfway, scored straight please, away. But the little step halfway, and go. Halfway. Spencer's there. He spots the tackle. It's a good tackle. Also, Ludlow spots it. Well, as we saw Underhill do before, he wins you. the back of the shoulders, beats all those Bath players in support there. A lot of movement in the Gloucester line out, and it's provided now for Barton. And here is Donald. Do not hell, play on. Wide they go. Ludlow got it away to May. Brilliant from Gloucester. Forward. This that's forward. Yeah. Surely from Seb forward, Atkinson. Matt. Forward. Full pass. I think Atkinson might have given away. It was forward. But he threw his hands to his head after he let go of the ball. It was such nice interplay though. Right up until the final pass. Every time a tackle came in, they were taken out by the quality and speed of the passing. But Johnny May just stray slightly in front of Atkinson. Thanks, Rosie. Out of There's been a lot of good changes of direction tonight, hasn't there, by both sides? That was a really good example of it. We've seen Finn Russell do it. 
What is it, Fred? Just leave it Just keeps the blindside defence honest. Ask them to step forward, stay connected. <laughs> huh? How long on the yellow, uh, Ryan? Three minutes to play out on the Clement yellow. Such a fantastic game. None of this edgy nice derby, nice has it? Patient. All action. Time on. And the weather's played ball as well, which has helped. The last few weeks have been very, very wet. But we have a terrific finish to look forward to here. Eight and a half minutes to play. 11 points separating these two. Lost are still with 14 men on the field. Bath having won on six of their last nine visits here, so an excellent recent record. Good to see Matt Carley trying to speed up the resets of the scrum. One big area we want to see. Crouch. Bind. Set. Oof, bit of a mix-up at the base, and Kutsia is in some trouble here. Ludlow's on to him, and the ball has been stolen by Donnell. It's there from Sassino to Barton. Huge miss pass for Carreras to cope with. Zamet on his own, surrounded by blue, black and white. Playing with an advantage, though, seemingly Gloucester is they get it away. A high tackle or width on the ball, and Johnny May, did he touch it? It's on Zamet, another one who appealed to the referee yeah, she, have a penalty. while the tackle was still being made. Yeah. Yeah. Up the ball first, up to the head. Just slipped up. Well, they've got to find, they've got to find points quickly, haven't they? So, Barton got 14 out of 13. He's going to be tucking this okay, as tight it. to the yeah, corner definitely. flag as he can. About a minute. And he's done well. Four, Thought he'd done rather four, better than the, the uh, assistant referee believed it to be. <laughs> 10, 12 metres out which does make a big old difference, as we know. Up goes Ludlow. Volume levels rising, that ball is coming to ground. The question is who dropped it? And the answer is Gloucester. So it's Bath's possession, and that might be enough for them to see off the opposition, potentially. Really good defence from Dutoit, the bar tight head. He can't change his bind, but he can try and block the ball from coming out. So he's on that far side, he's, he's, he's appeared there legally, he can't change his bind. So watch what he does with his backside, tries to get in between Varney and the ball, and then now it's gone down, he can just go on top of it as well. It's not a rule I like, it's not a law I like, but... It's perfectly within there. A collapsed mall or a failed mall. You don't have to roll away. Let's go. We'll put yeah. time on when we set up. Yes, sir. We've got again. Martin Bayfield, what news? I am touch side with uh, with Tom Dunn, who's living every moment, agonising over these last few moments. A lot more comfortable than it was in the first half. What's clicked in the second half? Well, I think we've exited better, you know, off the restart, we made a couple of mistakes in the first half, and you, you put the pressure back on yourself. This half, you've been more clinical on our exiting, got out a half of in one or two phases. The power game as well from up front seems to be, be going your way. Thomas Dutoy is enjoying life. He's a try-scoring machine for you boys. Yeah, he's been unbelievable for us. Uh, it's the tight contact work, it's, what, it's his bread and butter, and he's built for it, and we, we're enjoying it. Great stuff. Enjoy these last few moments, if you can. <laughs> Absolutely terrific chase on here from Matt Gallagher after a barnstorming run from the base from Jakob Kutsia and Gloucester in all sorts of bother inside their 22. Marauding Bath attackers, they've secured it. Underhill has it, Tutoy wants it, which potentially could spell more trouble for Gloucester. He's got all the skills. Lovely soft handling from the tight head. Rizamit hasn't got a hold of that, it's gone forwards from Thokana Singer, 
And Gloucester can draw breath again, but the clock is ticking Bath ever will, further away from them. Bath were lucky there that that didn't pop up into Reece Samet's hands because he was away. The execution as the crossfield kick was nowhere near as good as Emily's in the demo before the game. The sky's the crossfield kick. What a great pass that is. Heard Ben shout. Do that again, and it'll be a penalty. Okay? That Kick's just too high. Penalty. Can't take him. If this pops on, into his hands, it's try time. Just needs to go further forward, a little bit flatter. Time's off because now I'll kick the ball away. It's entertaining, isn't it? End to end. Very much so. Gloucester's first task, of course, is to get within a losing bonus point range. That will help. A free kick at the scrum. Barton, that one's to challenge for. Across comes Clock and a singer. And he's brought down low very well by Lewis Ludlow and uh, cross field they go and Carreras is brought into the attack for Gloucester. Being manhandled though by Oli Lawrence and again that counter ruck from Bath is strong this time not staying on their feet sufficiently and you can see the urgency with which Gloucester are trying to play now they may just have left it too late. One, no, 13 won the space by falling off his feet. And Barton's gone for broken, he's missed touch. And here's Russell. Inside, wait. Right, ball's live. Barton will take Play. this quickly. Johnny May to Carreras. He knows they've got to be playing their rugby down that end. Gallagher. Wait. Thank you, on side. In hot pursuit of his own kick. Carreras using Ben Donnell, and here's Reece Zamet. Trying the little chip and gather, but on the hoof from Russell. Carreras accelerates past Russell. Oh, and then just lost his feet. Wide they go to May. Gloucester increasingly looking a little desperate. Playing a huge amount of rugby oh, deep inside their own half. Good choice. Arthur pinning them there. Ford Robinson. They know they need to keep possession from here. Just right, two minutes now, remaining. And Varney recognises that having been through so many phases the boot is the requirement Muir though holds on to it well for Bath coming to his own in this second half thank you use it and Bath very much in control of their own destiny from here oh Christ another fine effort from Jakob Kutsir use it Ben. Steepling kick from Spencer. Carreras goes Hello. in. That might have gone forwards from Muir. It's fallen for Niall Annett. And Bath have another attack to look forward to. Spencer for Underhill. Not held, right Not held in the tackle. Reed there in support. Here's Ewells. Terrific finish this from Bath. We've grown into this game. The offload is good from Russell, and it was on hand. Side. Well to take it, Annette, with a huge pressure. Yeah, you're fine, stay where you are. And a minute remains. Ajomo, Lawrence. Good team tackle from Varney and Reese Zamet. And it's picked up now and fed wide by Thomas to Reese Zamet, who's got a lot to do. And too many Bath defenders over him. And they're over no the ball as well, tackle, but no release. not releasing the stricken winger. Some tired bodies out there, given everything they have, and there isn't a great deal more left. A little on the halfway there, John. So still halfway a couple of points 
up for grabs potentially for the cherry and whites a losing bonus potentially a okay, try bonus off. ben but time very much against them time for your man of the match i think underhill's okay, been outstanding down. spencer hey there, has led down. really really well played in the right times in the right parts of the pitch but Carreras was very, very close with some of his try saving tackles, but for me, the standout player has been Will Muir. He's our Gallagher Premiership Player of the Match. That ball is out. Varney. Atkinson, the link man, has gone in behind. It's trooped up, one handed by Underhill. And then Johnny May, who's uh, heading into reverse. Desperate times these for the Cherry and Whites. Clement, who served his time in the bin. Clock deep in the red. Still 70 metres to find. Ford Robinson, Barton. Uh, the handling not quite as crisp as it was in the early part of this contest. Carreras does well to hold on to it. A loose offload from Donald, but... Bath working hard to find a way onto that ball again. Barton... Probing that inside channel, Llewellyn crashes it up. It's now loose and it's swept up by Bath and they come forward through Russell and Ollie Lawrence finishes the job. A West Country derby that Bath will win here at King's Home. Ollie Lawrence is second and they have powered away from Gloucester in the second period. No less than they deserve. Well, the speed of some of their play in the second half has been fantastic. And as soon as they get the opportunity on the turnover, yeah, try to got good, masses of numbers. It's just about picking them off. And Finn Russell, almost just an easy throw over his right shoulder. And a walk in in that corner for Ollie Lawrence. The perfect finish for a perfect second half performance from Bath. It just looked like it was going to happen, didn't it? Thank they were so everyone. stretched, so out on their feet, Gloucester, that any turnover was going to lead to a try. What a very impressive bath. The final blow delivered by Finn Russell and a thumping win for Johan van Graan's men. It's the biggest tally that they've run up in the Premiership here at King's Home. And Gloucester, who led, remember, by 10 points at the break, had been obliterated in the second half. Six tries in all for Bath full-time. Gloucester 27, Bath 45.